Okay, we're going to start. Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Uh, happy National Tree Week. We're right in the middle of National Tree Week now. Thank you so much for joining us from all around the country and, and all around the world, some of you, to celebrate trees this evening. Uh, my name is Sarah Long, and I'm CEO of, of the Tree Council, which is a national charity that brings everybody together for the love of trees. Welcome to our National Tree Week Festival, which tonight is delighted to welcome Hamish Napier and David Russell. And together they've devised a fantastic, extraordinary evening of film, music and trees coming to you from the wild landscapes of the Scottish Highlands. So the conversation is going to begin in just a moment. But first, a very brief item of, of housekeeping. If you have any questions, do please put them in the Q&A rather than the chat. Um, and then uh, David and Hamish will aim to respond to as many as they can at the end. Coming back to our artists, we first heard at the Tree Council about Hamish through one of our fantastic volunteer tree wardens, Dave Elwand up in there, Wirral, and he'd heard about uh, Hamish from a, um, that he was an amazing folk musician from a Chinese cellist at a concert in Wigan. That's an entirely different story, but we're thrilled to have Hamish uh, with us this evening from his home in the Speyside. He's a jazz pianist, he's a flautist, he's a step dancer. He has a degree in astronomy and music and a passion for Scottish folk tunes. He's toured Europe and North America. He's won lots of awards, but we love him mostly because his music is rooted in trees and nature. And then David is an equally huge talent. He's a gifted photographer, one of Scotland's very finest. He's an awesome wilderness guide. He kayaks and he tells the most wonderful outdoor tales connecting us with nature from his home in the Cairngorms. His latest creation is a fantastic calendar with images of the Caledonian forest. And we'll put a link uh, in to that in the chat later. So thank you. Hamish and David for your fantastic support tonight for the trees and thank you again to you our awesome audience for being with us this evening. Now it's time to settle back comfortably as I hand over to our artistic duo Hamish and David over to you. Thanks very much Sarah um, and thank you also to Claire and John and Dominic who've been working behind the scenes to put all this together um, it takes a lot to organise an event like this in the background and uh, they've done an amazing job. And hello David, 15 miles away from me uh, in Aviemore. Yes, hello. <laughs> this, is, this is really bizarre for David and I because normally speaking, in fact, every time we've ever met has been in the Caledonian forest. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Like, uh, <laughs> taking photographs uh, or whatever. And uh, this is the first time that we've actually uh, talked across the uh, internet <laughs> so that's it's kind of cool but um i'll just talk a little bit about um just how we kind of got together and creatively we've got um we've got a shared interest in the habitat of the forest um obviously all, all the creatures that are involved in the forest but one of the main things is the kind of the beauty of the trees is one of the most important things and we'll talk a bit about that later but we've got a mutual mutual appreciation of each other's work and we collaborated first on a video which we'll talk about in a minute but we also um collaborated for my album the woods um which was sponsored by a local organization called cairngorms connect uh, it's a habitat restoration project in the cairngorms and uh, we, I had to write a piece of music for all 18 letters of the Gaelic tree alphabet. And uh, so um, that, was, that was my kind of heavy involvement in trees. And, uh, and so uh, David has got a, has a font of knowledge on, uh, on the different kind of folklore associated with all of our Scottish native trees. Um, but uh, we had quite a lot of conversations in the forest and we got together and we made a video. Do you want to tell folks about the, the improvised video that we did? <laughs> well, actually, I should just back up a second because actually uh, Hamish, you see, the way, the way that we first met was that Hamish was trying to produce this album. And so I was first introduced to Hamish because he sent me an email begging for money and I said no. 
and uh, musicians uh, do though <laughs> <laughs> so they so said i was working at a company that was um involved in sustainable tourism and had to sort of a, a pot of money for like green projects so sadly it wasn't the type of thing that we could put uh the company's money towards but as soon as i read hamish's email it was like all right this is a guy i have to meet because uh you know i went and listened to a few of your albums and i just instantly kind of got the music and uh just felt like i need to, i need to meet this guy because it'd be be really cool to hang out and, and likewise really... i went on to david's website and he's got these brilliant <laughs> little bite-sized blog posts where he's just like staggering through really difficult terrain and say you know filming things and they're great there's a whole series of them um and they're just brilliant you can dive in and out all these wee videos so i just ended up it's like going for a walk in the forest watching these <laughs> wee videos so yeah, so, so so I guess the nice the nice thing when we met in person for the first time was that there there was this kind of like mutual passion for the the Caledonian forest, which was I think well for me it was really a nice experience because uh, quite often I find if I if I'm introducing myself to people I really need to go into a lot of explanation about what it is I like to do. And it's like you know people are like you do what you do. You, you spend like eight hours a day stomping around the, the woods and just taking photos of trees and it's like uh yes and usually people are like why why do you do that whereas like it was just like cool yeah let's let's go do it so you know I didn't really need any any justification or explanation yeah. you know we just kind of met up and just went straight out into the woods and we were we were both just like oh yeah this is great we like it out here so yeah um, and I think yeah, so, so it was well it, so it was really nice to, to for, for then for Hamish for you to invite me to uh to be involved in your album in a, in a small way and um, through providing some imagery but yeah as as Hamish said we went to uh to Lock Garten and I, I don't know what we were planning to do that day but we kind of turned up we had a camera we ended up filming a promotional video for your album in about 30 minutes <laughs> and it was just super easy because uh, it was just really easy to work together and the conditions were, were amazing so yeah it was it was just kind of really rewarding on on a number of levels well you had an inkling that there might be a misty morning over the loch and misty morning right. equals good sound carriage of a flute <laughs> uh, as it bounces off the other side of the loch and comes back at you and we got exactly that and i think I think that to be honest we did manage to put a video together very easily but, but that is because you have a knowledge of the forest you knew the best spot to go to on Loch Garten at the best time so mm -hmm. I think there you know it saved a lot of time with with your kind of local knowledge as it were but um so I, th I think we should say to folks like we're very sorry but we're not actually going to be showing that video uh tonight yeah. but we are going to be showing three others uh, which have kind of come along as as evolutions from that project as, as Hamish was very kind to just give me kind of universal permission to use his music in my videos and yeah. like, as a video creator like having quality music is uh, it, it can be very difficult because um, you know it's it's not cheap <laughs> basically so um, it was amazing to to have that because you know Hamish's music comes really from the forest uh, you know, and, and my work comes from the forest as well, in in, in a way. So it was, uh, you know, so the videos that we that we will show tonight, kind of build on that mutual, um, you know, creativity from from two separate angles. Um, mm. so yeah. Well, I think we can probably. That's a really nice summary of what we're going to be talking about today, and we'll probably go into quite a few of those points later on. Um, but I think we can probably play our first video. In a, in a minute um, and it's called snow
There we go. There we go, um, number one. <laughs> um, I saw a few comments there from folk about sort of video and audio quality. So, um, yeah, unfortunately, folks, streaming high quality video across Zoom does present its challenges. We, we, we tried our best to make sure earlier today that it would work as well as possible. Um, for anyone who's not getting the full quality, though, we, we will post links later on to where you'll be able to watch them online. So, yeah. um, you know, you, you'll be able to go in and, and find them on, on YouTube and so on. So, yeah. yeah, sorry if they don't look perfect here, but yeah, <laughs> hopefully it should look all right, at least. And there's, I just want to say there's a few of, uh, David has a few muses and one of them there is definitely in there, Loch, uh, Loch Va, near Navi Moor. Mm. And another of your muses is the, uh, is Whitewell and Rothy Marcus. And I just, one of the things I just think that's really cool about what David does is the fact that it's, <laughs> it's a, uh, it's, it's like going back to the same places over and over and over again uh, to get them in different conditions. I think mm. that's such a cool thing. Yeah, well, as yeah, so so for um, I guess we haven't deeply explained this yet, but yeah, I, I so I'm a landscape photographer. So you know, once upon a time, I picked up a camera, I pointed it at a tree, and I took a photo, and I thought, oh, that felt kind of nice. <laughs> I think I'll keep doing that. And I, I, you know, there really isn't anything more to it than that, you know, and mm. how it's happened. But but yes, you know, so so these days, you know, I, I teach people landscape photography and I have this kind of I guess compulsion to you know to, to just go in and constantly be experiencing you know many facets of, of beauty that the uh, that our local landscape here in the Cairngorms has to show mm. and as I constantly tell people when I'm teaching landscape photography is like well I mean, if you want to break down the knowledge in percentages it's 99 percent landscape and one percent photography mm. uh, there's a lot of people who you know who, who kind of come along and, and they really feel like it's it's their knowledge of the camera that's that's lacking if you know if their photos aren't very good or um you know maybe that they should get this lens or that camera and that's going to revolutionize things for them and usually the answer is no it's not the camera. <laughs> you, you, you certainly need to have a, a basis of knowledge to do landscape photography, but it's actually nothing that can't be taught in a morning. Quite frankly, it's the biggest secret in landscape photography is that it's actually really easy. Um, the, the, the thing that makes a difference is your knowledge and understanding of the place itself. Mm. So yeah, Hamish, hey, as you were saying, it's, it's having that familiarity with places. It's it's mm. being able to make predictions based on weather forecasts, or even just looking outside, uh, you know, sticking your head out the window and, and seeing that there's a there's a particular quality in the light that day, or the, the you know the, the clouds are in a certain position near near sunset, mm. uh, or there's a frost, or whatever it is, you know, whatever kind of condition it is. But but then translating that into into understanding where to go. Yeah. And where yeah. to point your camera. And if you have that familiarity, you don't need to waste time looking because you already yeah. know. So you just go there and, and it's, it's your kind of, It's basically, in many ways, it's kind of decision making that's driven by a knowledge of the place. And uh, if I was to put parallels in my music, if I had to write about a certain, tr if I wanted to write a piece of music about a certain place or a certain tree or a certain piece of local heritage, for example, the people that used to float the trees down from from uh, the places in the screen behind us uh, up high onto the river Spey. You know, if I needed to write about a piece of music that was a soundtrack to that, you know, being in those places and hanging out in there for hours and knowing that place, they actually help me make musical decisions. They help inform the arrangement, the key, the tonality, the music all gets driven by this kind of sort of uh, idea, uh, or, or this kind of, um, yeah, I just have the audacity to, to think that what I might write might be quite good. <laughs> first of all, it's kind of outrageous a ego. Of, yeah, a bit of stubbornness, really. Uh, first of all, I go, I'll do that, and that'll sound good. Uh, but it's all driven by the fact that, um, that, yeah, being in that place. If I wasn't in that place, that all the decisions along the way that I would make musically would be so different, um, and I would end up with a completely different end result. So I can see the parallels between there and landscape music if you like, mm -hmm. uh, and between that and landscape um, photography. Um, so Hamish, maybe you could talk a little bit because I've always been fascinated about, right, so 
for me, landscape photography is really easy because you go out, you see a nice scene, you point a camera at it, and you know, you come back with your well, I suppose if you if you want to call it art, then you know, you come back with your art. Mm. But your 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 objective is to turn a tree into a piece of music which <laughs> to me is like a transfiguration that just doesn't seem possible and yet it happens right because <laughs> I, I i listen to your music um you know sometimes when i'm when i'm out when i'm in that place and it speaks to me of a place and like, i don't have a musical bone in my body so how did how does that work well um in a way it's probably clunkier than you think um actually if you look at a certain tree uh, if you take for instance an elm tree um and they have that really moody kind of spooky look to them and then you start digging into the folklore across different cultures and it has this kind of you know it appears in every halloweeny type scene you can imagine and it's got these amazing branches that sometimes fall off like the one has in the storm the other day there um, at my front gate massive great big branch uh, you know it's a kind of grumpy moody tree um oh i'm just saying that we've attached our emotion to that um uh kind of idea but you know, if I was to paint a picture of that, I go, okay, I'm just going to start with a minor key. May cheesy a decision as it may be, I'm going to start with a minor key that rules out major. And you start focusing, focusing, focusing. Um, and then you go, okay, is this going to be a racing fast tree? Elm trees, normally speaking, when I see them, they're pretty uh, big and impressive and stand alone. I feel it's like something that would be better to be slow mo than fast. So start on on the woods album there's a tree called the tree of the underworld and it's got all sorts of spooky noises on it it's got um a partner sue ali playing the cello and the musical saw on it and it's very spooky it's got roaring stags in it it's got um all kinds of noises that help to sort of conjure up a scene and a soundscape of of kind of something a bit spooky um and that's just something that i've attached to it but hopefully when somebody looks at the tree it kind of goes with that visual scene um so you just it's almost like you're doing a portrait of each tree you take it what it is visually and go what would be a good soundtrack to match with that um you know so um for for the uh for the the birch tree i wrote a tune called the pioneer which we'll hear in the next video in a wee minute um and it's written it's a video you uh, your video on mist uh, david but it's it's we use the soundtrack of a tune called the pioneer which represents the birch tree and the birch tree has this very dark and purple and moody look to it in winter. Um, and it's very graceful always. And in the summer, it has this lovely kind of um, these little delicate leaves. So it needed to be a neat little tune with major one part, minor the other. You know, summer, it's it's beautiful autumn and uh, summer colours. And then it's it's kind of dark, sparse winter. So the tune I wrote for that um, in so many different ways from the melody choices to the intervals that are involved in it on that microscopic musical level to the macroscopic level which is like the chords that the guitarist plays and then the arrangement is like the whole thing is meant to sound like that and I was very pleased when um, when an ecologist I know that works for the RSPB says that is a birch tree <laughs> the tune is a birch tree I was like thank yeah. goodness <laughs> um, and again, it's that idea that I would think that I would be able to write something that would work in the first place. It's just stubbornness, really. Um, <laughs> and the, so hopefully that um, that's kind of answers your question, David. Well, why, why don't we why don't we tee up that video next? Yeah. Um, because there's there's a couple of, of, of talking points there I'd like mm -hmm. to touch on, but I think it'd be nice to let people see the video yeah but, but just before we do play it i just want to say actually so that that particular tune the pioneer mm -hmm. um is certainly one of my favorites from the woods album but that is it's in part because when we went to film the promo for for your album uh you know we were standing on the shore at lock garden as the mist kind of gently rose into the atmosphere mm -hmm. it was it was ridiculously early in the morning it was absolutely <laughs> silent and then I kind of got treated to this like private performance as you started playing the pioneer and I never heard it before. And it was just, it, to be honest, that was a real privilege that moment. Like, it's, it's one of my favorite uh, you know, memories of recent times. It was amazing. So uh, I, I actually tried to do homage to that. Um, homage? Homage. <laughs> <You know>? uh, <laughs> fromage, cheese. Anyway, um, yeah, so I tried to do homage to that in the video because that opening shot 
is is just is at Lock Garden with a mist rising just as um, you know as as that tune comes in. So oh. was why there not some going... couple that were camped around the corner or something, and the guy <laughs> was getting out of his tent going, "What the." Yeah, that? that was like, quite funny. But, uh, yeah, us, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I actually went back to the loch one night on Halloween. Um, I went round to my pal's house on the loch, and it was misty. Um, and I just thought I'll just play into this full mist at the side of Loch Garten with my flute. You know, it's pitch black, no street lights, absolutely nobody parked along the loch, freezing cold. Stood there, and I I properly got freaked out because it is. <laughs> really in the wilderness and I, and I and I don't like the idea of believing in ghosts or anything but I there is a, supposed to be a monster in that loch and I was back in the car in minutes uh, and I tried to make a recording but I left the recorder switched on and later on when I was listening back you can hear me swearing and then running back to the car and then slamming the door like a big chicken so um, but yeah it's a cool place I recommend it's famous for the Ospreys of course I'm sure a lot of folk have heard about the Loch Garden Ospreys right. but we'll, we'll play so, the video yeah, on that note, maybe let's let's see if we can uh, get that one going. Beautiful shots, David. Lovely shots. Well, <laughs> so we were just talking about that tune, right? The Pioneer. Yeah. Uh, so when I made that video, mm. uh, 
I, I, I felt guilty because I was like, there's no birch trees in it. <laughs> like, not really. Because I, I was, for ages, I was thinking maybe I'll use that tune and make a video about birch trees. Mm. But I just, I, I think I just heard something else in it. Yeah. Because, and uh, I, I, I've given this some thought. Mm. And, uh, When you know when you look closely at the, at nature, you know, especially say local locally here in the Cairngorms, you you often find the pattern of one thing repeated in something else, but that's completely different, and mm. it, it's almost as if there's just this underlying structure to the universe, which we we know there is really, uh, yeah. But, but it's it's remarkable how it um, you know how it shows itself, you know, like. For instance, I mean, well, topically, the way that the you know the shape of a tree is is matched by the sh the, the branching shape of a river. <laughs> no, no, no. We've, we've, we've just we're talking about trees. And we're going to go on to rivers at some point. Um, so, yeah. So, I mean, when I, when I hear when I hear that music, and and, and it, it just seemed to fit the same story as the mist because it has these kind of very slow, calm drifting elements you know as it starts off you know as if as if you are enshroud, enshrouded in mist and you've kind of got that air of like slight mystery and enchantment and then you also have those big kind of emotional hits where it kind of goes like wow you know where you're like up flying above the clouds or standing on a mountaintop above an inversion mm -hmm. and when you say inversion you mean like a cloud inversion where yeah yeah exactly you're above the clouds looking down on the mist yeah exactly yeah so it's it seemed to tell that story as well mm. which uh was good because like so so thing is right your your music is is both really easy to work with and really difficult to work with <laughs> yeah we were chatting about that it before, tells yeah. its own story so beautifully so so powerfully that you you simply could not fit it to uh, you know, to to a visual element that was wrong. You know, I mean, can can you imagine, like, you know, if I tried to make that video of like the Star Wars theme tune playing or something? <laughs> you know, it's it's kind of like it, it's a similar kind of deal, in, in that you you've told your story, mm. so I have to match it with the video. It can't it can't it can't sort of it can't be in opposition. Um, yeah, I th I think one of the things I find interesting is that you know I think you and I are both trying to commu trying to communicate the same thing, that that we that we sort of think it kind of goes beyond emotion. It's that sense of awe that you get, that sense of belonging to nature, that connection and that that sort of deep connection. But I think I think you're the same. I've got this stubbornness that I believe that it is tangible and that I can present it as a thing. It's like here's that feeling I get when I'm out and about in nature walking through the forest that when you've all your thoughts of that week have vanished from your mind and you're walking through all these trees i mean i've heard the expression a tree bath or whatever you know and um, there's loads of different ways to to name it people talk about it as going for a walk to clear your head or for meditation um but there's definitely this feeling that you get where suddenly you're just on this kind of it's like a really primal feeling and then um, and it's something that that if all of your creations come from that point, that as a starting point, then there's going to be you'll you'll see it in people's work if it's a real thing, uh, and so I believe that it's tangible. <laughs> it's just it's hard to explain, isn't it? It is. It's like I mean, every time I go out and take a photo that I like, mm. it, I I feel as if like I've taken this like tiny drop of stillness from like a pool of water you know <laughs> like the tiniest mm. tiniest amount mm. but on on very rare occasions it is possible to actually like throw yourself bodily into it <laughs> you know it's mm. like you know i i don't know i don't know what it is but yeah there, there is there is something but as you say, it's it's not even an emotion. It's beyond that. I mean, it's all very well to say, oh, I like going out in the woods because it makes me feel good. But there's, there's something so much deeper and more profound yeah. than that, which which really goes into like the core of like, you know, who and what we are. Well, that's it. We develop with the forest, you know, as the Ice yeah. Age and the forest advanced after the last Ice Age, 
we grew as the forest spread and grew we grew with them we cut them down made clearings with them we've evolved um but jim crumley speaks a bit about that in his book the thing right is that both you and i mm. know exactly what we're talking about even though we can't put it into words right mm. <laughs> which is it's kind of a, a bizarre and amazing and wonderful thing mm -hmm. and i think both having studied physics and astronomy we find that almost a bit irritating because like we're, we're sort of trained in trying to define things and we're like Ugh! it keeps slipping through your hand like uh, like sand i sometimes think but, but, but we both know what it is and i think we both we both recognize that we were we were both kind of looking for the same thing mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's you know we we express that search for whatever it is. Yeah, by by our creativity, right? Yeah, but it, I mean the, the thing the thing that so there's two sides to this, right? So mm. photography and video mm. has the potential to show you in a kind of literal sense mm. what it is that's giving you that feeling. Okay, mm. so. I think landscape photography is interesting that way because it shows you simultaneously, you know, the, well, it, it's, it, it's like saying like, Hey, this thing made me feel really, you know, something. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, so you're trying to show the, the viewer that same feeling, but you're also literally showing them what gave you that feeling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the music somehow I think has the ability to go even beyond that. And it's like, it just hands that emotion straight over. Mm -hmm. and just puts it right inside you mm. but you kind of have to be fertile to that idea you know you have to be receptive to it in the first place yeah i think that's like what the listener you mean the, the observer the listener needs yeah. to kind of be you were talking earlier on about it's like two cans with a bit of string in between what what did you yeah, mean by yeah, that? It's, like, it's, it's, it's like yeah, so yeah, those you know, the two cans with a bit of string, you know, telephone and so on. So you can't send that message unless the person is, is ready to receive, you know, or, mm. or you could say it's like an electric current, you know, it, the current doesn't flow until the whole circuit is complete. Mm. Um, so it's it, so I think the, the point here is that not everybody is going to get it, yeah, right, what we're doing. You know, it's it's a bit like poetry in that respect. Like you know, ninety nine percent of the poems I read, I despise, but you know, every once in a while you read one and you're just like, oh, that's it. That's the yeah, thing yeah. that I've yeah. been trying to express. You know, there's this. there's some there's some writers like Jim Crumley uh, and Nan Shepherd and Seton Gordon, and you just go through it and you go, wow, that's it. They've just they have just. Uh, hit on the point beautifully um you know they're talking about an eagle above karur bothy flying up at you yeah know, I mean, I, five thousand feet and you're just like that is i just feel like i've been transported to a nice autumn day on brearia looking up at the sky well you know i've just been transported to that place uh, and that's the that's the thing that we're both looking to do you know both musically and visually is to take people to that to that place and you can only re really do it by spending time there yeah um, no it's yeah. I mean, you mentioned nan shepherd which is it's kind of inevitable in any discussion yeah, yeah. But, um i mean yeah i, I consider myself like a, a, something of like a nan shepherd disciple <laughs> i suppose <laughs> because uh in, in that her, 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 you know her words can be followed when you're in that place and you know and like we just spent like 20 minutes well maybe not 20 minutes but we spent like a few a few minutes there trying to explain like that that feeling that's beyond emotion you know is it tangible is it not tangible you know mm. is it there or not and nan shepherd has the ability in her uh, book the living mountain sorry for, for anyone who's um, wondering who on earth we're talking about she's but, on the scottish five pound note yeah so but, but she expressed that in one sentence you know she said something moves between me and it mm. And like, I just kind of like want to melt when I read that. <laughs> yeah. I get it, you know, I understand what you mean. Mm. You know, I've, I've been to those same places and I've felt that same feeling. So I, I just I just wish that I could communicate that sensation mm. with, you know, anything like that degree of, of beauty and clarity, really. I think that's that's the ultimate goal. Here. That's the ultimate goal. That's that's like the thing that we keep we keep chasing. Um, and it's the thing that drives me when, you know, I don't write music very often when I'm out there. You're obviously out there 
pointing a camera, taking a picture, you're there. Uh, and there's a there's a small amount of pre production, but I know that you're not a big uh, sorry post production. You're not a big post production person. You like to just you know, which I think is cool too. Um, it's almost like you want the strength of the picture to stand in its own merit, and I think I'm like that with melodies. I want the melody to be strong and stand in its own merit, and I use old forms like jigs and reels and strass bass. We're very lucky to have our own tune type in this area, and slow airs and these kind of tunes that are usually sixteen or thirty two bars long, and I use these forms and I. I, while I'm writing, I'm thinking to myself, is you know, you know when it feels as if it's right that it's 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 done a good sketch, it's convincing. Another analogy I would say is like, uh, it's like when you see um, bad acting, you're like, hang on a minute, something's not quite right there. But when you see good acting, you maybe don't notice it. You just get pulled right in. Um, you know, I think being a musician is a bit of a thankless task. It's a bit like being a plasterer. You know, if the music's not any good, then um, <laughs> then uh, like if a plaster's done a messy job then everyone notices but if they do a great job um nobody says anything it's just like it's expected to be that way uh, i think tune yeah. writing is a bit like that um you know in a sense um perhaps we can have a wee look at our uh actually just before we do david could you just talk a wee bit about mist because that was what the last video was was on and and I think you described something earlier on. You said yeah. uh, basically you can't just stumble across mist. I, like that. <laughs> I suppose you can, but <laughs> so the point. I think one of the things that intrigues me about landscape photography is that it's one of the the few pursuits where we really make a point of seeking out beauty and wonder and awe, which is kind of omnipresent but we just kind of go through life uh or we can i should say go through life without even noticing that it's there if we don't sit up and pay attention yeah and mist i think is is the perfect example of that because anyone who's a landscape photographer you know who's really into it just goes nuts for mist <laughs> you know yeah. um, it's you know if you see mist in the forecast in autumn you know, that's going to get you out the door good and early. And, you know, that will get you up onto that cold mountaintop mm -hmm. you know, or wherever it is, because you you have the potential to experience. Um, well, I just have to say transformative beauty, you know, that, that can fundamentally alter your, your your whole idea of life. You know, yeah. really. some of the things I've seen, I just I can't even begin to describe them. Uh, it's a wee bit like when you look at the night sky and you get you see the Milky Way and you realise it's not just a line; it's actually the side on of a of a you know of a flat disc that goes back, and you get that three D perspective, and you just go <clears throat> takes your breath away, and everything you're worried about that week just yeah. gets put in enormous perspective, and you just it almost makes you laugh with delight because you just yeah. realise that. Um, and I think you do like definitely in the woods, you get these moments of just like. This is great, you know. This is uh, I'm so small and insignificant. <laughs> no, absolutely, I agree with that. Like I th I, some some people, I, I gather, feel like the night sky makes them feel insignificant in a kind of bad way. You yeah, know, it's, it makes them feel small and unimportant. But it just I I love that feeling. It takes I take comfort in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, on the one hand, if if I if I feel kind of you know my worries are weighing me down, then it makes me feel like nothing matters <laughs> i am a, i am a speck on a moat of dust and yeah. it doesn't matter whether i you know send that email or whatever it <laughs> it, there was just something i wanted to briefly mention as well was just about the field recordings element so that is one part of my music i do write a lot of my music in the house uh, at the computer and using my memory of the place to help drive the creativity uh, and sometimes i do write melodies in a forest, press record, go for it, uh, and play something on my flute or sing. Um, but sometimes I like making field recordings, and some of those videos have uh, the last video featured uh, the sound of a woodpecker uh, in my pal Will's back garden in Tullach, uh, and various other different field recording noises. And if you start with those noises, that's a good place. So that's that's probably my direct comparison. I'm going out there and making audio recordings of the forest. You're going out there and pointing a camera. Um, sort of thing. So I'm probably more of a post post production y type person than you, David. You're kind of more of a yeah, purist, straight up, if you like. Well, I'm not. Sh I'm not sure if I am. Uh, you know, because it's it's about the ingredients, right? Mm. 
you're like because if, if you're if, if you're out there seeking a recording or, or something as you, as you just mentioned like mm. how how far and how long do you have to look to get that recording of the kappa Kaylee? you know like mm. how many devoted hours do you have to pour into the woods to come up with that singular moment mm. you know and that's do you know what i mean that photo that you're actually using as your background like, mm. I, I find is an interesting like example <laughs> I think that we're talking about because like that 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 day when I took that was it was one of those kind of culminating moments mm. you know because I, I I spent years literally years waiting for a morning where there would be clear skies frost on the ground and golden leaves on the trees yeah and mist you know like you, you can get any one of those things practically any day of autumn yeah but, uh, you know it's it's about those intersections, you know, that moment of maximum beauty. Yeah, yeah, lovely. You've That's amazing. So I think we're just search that yeah. you really understand. Then, when you find something that you realize, like this is rare, you know, I, I, I'd be lucky to see this once in a decade if I was out here every day, you know. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> well, we, we've had we've talked about snow, we've talked about mist, and the next video is about water. And it sources up in the high Cairn Gorms, and um, I think uh, we've got we've got Julie Fowlis, a brilliant Gaelic singer. She was the she sang a song in the film Brave, and she's one of Scotland's top musicians. Um, and she she's reciting this wonderful poem, and this is an exclusive this video because nobody else has seen it at all except David and I, and it's um, it's very beautiful. It, it actually brought me to tears the first time. I saw it. So get your hankies out. <laughs> the The tune that is getting played is called The Dance, and it's a tune which is an alpine mountain waltz, uh, which is in a Dorian mode. So it's halfway between major and minor. So um, we'll just let the video speak for itself. By the randomness of the way the rocks tumbled ages ago, the water pours. It pours, it pours ever along the slant of downgrade, dashing its silver thumbs against the rocks, or pausing to carve a sudden curled space where the flashing fish splash or drowse, while the kingfisher overhead rattles and stares. And so it continues for miles, this bolt of light. It's only industry to descend and to be beautiful while it does so. As for purpose, there is none. It is simply one of those gorgeous things that was made to do what it does perfectly and to last as almost nothing does, almost forever.
his darks and burn horseback brown, his roll rock high road roaring down. In coop and in comb, the fleece of his foam flutes and low to the lake falls home. What would the world be, once bereft of wet and of wildness? Let them be left, oh let them be left, wildness and wet, long live the weeds and the wilderness yet. Keep oh, I love the poems, <laughs> and I love that shot of the, um, just zooming out, really sorry, there's somebody at the door there, um, but I love that shot, um, two seconds, I'll let you take this away, David. Oh, no worries. <laughs> so, yeah, when I, when I first sent that to Hamish, uh, <laughs> he called me up and he was like, yeah, he was a bit emotional, which was very gratifying. Uh, <laughs> I was I was in floods of tears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I mean it was it was a great it was a great fun project to work on for me, and uh, it was funny because it started off as something completely different. Mm -hmm. It was initially going to be a video about Taradin and Loch Marie, I think, mm -hmm. and then I I just I think I just went up the hill and kind of got some shots of water and uh, set it to that tune, and then was like, oh, this could be a thing. And then once, but once it started, it kind of snowballed, and then I, re I really wasn't satisfied until I'd got like every single shot that I wanted. Mm. Um, some of which were pretty fun, <laughs> you know, like flying a drone inside a snow tunnel. Lovely, yeah, brilliant, <laughs> Poss potentially a very expensive hobby. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, there was things like that. Like, there was a lot of days up the hill to get some of those shots, and uh, waiting for rainstorms in summer and and things like that, and. Uh, yeah, it was just uh, it, it was just really satisfying. So there's so many lovely comments that you can see in the chat here. People oh, absolutely nice. love you. that, and that you know picture of the, the 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 waterfall with the snow and the music. Wow! Thank you both so much. Isn't it beautiful that the the Cairngorms are known as Mona Rua, the Reddy Brown Mountains, and at the start of that video, they are Reddy Brown in that sunset. You can see why the Gaelic people called it that. You know. Cool. So we have time for just a couple of questions. We're wondering whether Hamish might even treat us to a a, a little taste of music at some point. <laughs> I just, I'll give. I've got this flute here, so I'll just give you a wee blast of a of a flute yeah, tune. Yeah. Uh, no, no bother. Uh, I'll I'll keep it short. I promise. But uh, this is a Scottish flute made of um, boxwood um, from Ayrshire, and I'll just play that tune that we just heard. Uh, the dance which is about the, the river spay. <laughs>
that's it. It's an eight-beat Alpine Mountain Waltz in the Dorian mode. <laughs> I don't know how I came up with that one, but uh, it, with those combination of things, but that's that's. I, I have no idea what any of that means. First album but, I, or ever. but I knew what it meant in the you know, in, in the real sense. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there's a few questions here. Um, do we have any plans for future projects together? Yes. Do we? <laughs> uh, well, on my the... album, The Hill, I was hoping yeah. that we'd collaborate on a track together. That's my next CD. So I'm hoping Is that, that a plan we'll... or just an intention? <laughs> was that? Well, no, it's, it's curious because like none of the stuff that has kind of come out of our work has been planned. Really, yeah. it all just kind of happened or evolved. Yeah, <laughs> one well, one or two times we've actually tried to plan something, it didn't work out. It didn't work, aye, but we still had a day out in the hill, yeah. so nobody uh, nobody was worried. So yeah. yeah, I think I mean yeah, Hamish, if, um, I, I certainly would would love to be involved in some small way in the hill. That would be really fun to do some filming up there, and uh, I can't wait to get my hands on some more of your your music. <laughs> well, <laughs> we, new films. We, we, David has a book coming out. He probably won't tell you that. But oh, well, I don't know if it's will. coming out as such. It's uh, it's been sent to an agent for consideration. So I await my rejection email in about two weeks' time. <laughs> Any publishers out there? Um, yeah, uh, give them a shout <laughs> as well. Um, so that that, but we've also got this this video just to get this final, uh, video that you just watched. That getting that finalised. That's that's I suppose in the pipeline. And another question that was asked here by Joanna Burgess, and Joanna um, is a, uh, I know Joanna, she's a, a real fan of the Cairngorm, she climbed Ben McDewey, and she's actually commissioned me to compose a piece of music uh, about Ben McDewey for my next album, The Hill, she's a collaborator there, and she's said here, uh, I know what you feel about the frustration of trying to create something that expresses what you're experiencing. I grew up with a father who was an illustrator, artist, and cartoonist, and can't draw. And I cannot draw. I love to read and I have tried uh, to write, but it's not enough to share. I'm really looking forward to uh, Hamish being able to put my scribblings outlining how my brief experience in the Cairngorms made me feel uh, made me feel to music. So um, cool. Um, and uh, there's a question here from Bob Glenn. I don't know if you want to read that one out, David. Oh, about sharing them as widely as possible. Yeah, well, um... So a couple of a couple of the the snow mist the snow video and the mist video are already up on YouTube live at the moment. The river one needs to wait for now because there's um, it, we're not able to share that over the the open internet at this point. We can do it for a private audience. Mm. So the the river video might change slightly. Uh, depending on the permissions for <laughs> for one of those poems. Sadly, I think it's perfect as it is, but. Uh, yeah, there's a there's, there's a copyright issue um, if we if yeah. we put it online. So um, I would like to resolve that, which might mean that we need to find a new a new poem. Um, just to to run on though, I think someone else asked what the poems were. Um, the first oh, one, the first the first one on on the river video was uh, was indeed a Mary Oliver poem uh, called Stebbins Gulch, which. Uh, yeah, I just I was just reading one of her collections one day, and I came across that, and I was just like, "That's it, that's the one." <laughs> you know, as I said earlier, it's like just a, it's like that sudden bolt of lightning where you suddenly realise like that's what I've been trying to say. Um, yeah. And the and the second one was a slightly truncated version of "In the Snaid by Gerard Manley Hopkins, who was I think a popular poet of the nineteenth century. So it was the first and the last verses um, of that. So yeah, they just. It was nice. It's like I have this kind of thing about nature in that I, I feel like it it teaches us all and it teaches us all the same thing. So sometimes you, um, you know, you, you read you read a piece of writing or something that could be from somewhere else completely different in the world or from a totally different time. And yet, you know, you go out and you have a walk in the Cairngorms and you're like, that's it. That's it. Oh, hey. um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So somebody um, here was asking, "What instrument do you associate with the aspen tree?" So I just nipped away to get these things from Australia, which are, um, you know, I think, and I've used them in loads of my. So they're basically that, they kind of mimic that sound of the, the shimmering aspen, and I've one of the tunes that written on the on the um, on the woods, uh, the trembling tree uh, is written for for the aspen. So. Um, as a bright, happy, explosive 
kind of straight up tree um, and, and the tune hopefully reflects that. Um, a couple more questions. Um, uh, David, have you got any ones that you want to add? Maybe just oh, I really, I really like this question from Loretta. Um, it says, any thoughts on recording in other areas of the country or is Scotland the only place that excites your talents? Um, certainly not. I, I would really like to film in some in some pretty cool places. Um, I, you know, I'm really fond of North of England. I've never really been to Wales except for a weekend. Uh, I've never been across to Ireland. There's a lot of places that I'd really like to go. But um, in terms of creativity, as as we were saying at the start, for me, it's it's really driven by that knowledge and familiarity with with places. So when when I when I go to a place that I've never been before, I mean, e even if it's quite a dramatic landscape um, on the face of it, I, I literally feel incapable of creating from that because I don't know the place. And I feel like- It's like, like learning a new instrument really, yeah, isn't it? Like you, it's you like suddenly putting a fiddle in my hand. In it mm -hmm. for, any, for any of it to come out in you. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, some photographers just seem to like literally go all over the world and snap, snap, snap all these like iconic places, <laughs> you know, and it's like, oh look, another photo of Iceland. I haven't seen 18 of those already today <laughs> in the yeah. saturated world that we live in. So yeah, it, 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 being driven by that deep knowledge rather than that shallow knowledge just, just yeah. means that yeah. um, it's, it, it, it just takes time for that, for that process to happen. Um, yeah. So, yes, great yeah. question. So thank you so much. Sadly, we're coming to the end of tonight's conversation. It's been absolutely amazing and inspirational um, to, to sort of roam across the Scottish landscape. So I think for me, you've, you've opened our, our eyes and our ears to the connections with nature to make us look at those overlooked things in a completely new way, um, which is fantastic. So, so thank you so much for that. I love that phrase, landscape music. I don't know whether that's been coined before, Hamish, but you used it. Is that a known? That's my, that Duncan Chisholm, um, he writes about Strathglass, um, and I play a lot of music with him, but I've heard him use that uh, that uh, that phrase before. And in many ways, what we what we both do, a kind of similar thing, um, him for his area of Strathglass near Inverness and me for the Cairngorms. Yeah, amazing. So, and I love those rolling banks of mist, you know, um, in, in uh, a pioneer that that we saw as well just just incredible so i mean i've, I've seen in the q a that there have been quite a few questions um about how to find out more about your work about how to find your music in the shop about david how to find your fabulous calendar um there are lots and lots of goodies that would make great christmas presents for people whether it be um you know a a, a walking and wildlife trek or a calendar or some music from Hamish's music shop. So the, the links are gonna be in the chat. If not, you will receive them in an email later uh, with the link to the recording. So, so do, do visit again. Um, you'll also find on the Tree Council website, the details of the next webinar, which is Mistletoe Friend or Foe, which is coming up on Friday. So do join us then for that one if you can. And also if you have youngsters at home, we have a book reading for seven to 107 year olds, which will be going up very shortly uh, about a tree and all the wildlife that lives within it. So do so much to um, David. To Thank you so much Thank for you having us. To Claire you. behind the scenes who initiated um, this, this gathering and to John and Dom who've done such a fantastic job supporting us. We feel very honoured to have had a world exclusive tonight. Um, that's I think probably the first time the Tree Council's had a word, world exclusive on the webinar. Um, but thank you to you, our audience, and now it's time to say goodbye. And thank you, thank you from all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Julio. Thank you, Julio. Yeah. It's been a pleasure to join you from my bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everybody. Thank you so much.